Good evening, everybody. We're continuing our search, our path, finding our own path to Kodesh Baruch Hu, the path of the just, using the path of the just by Rav Moshe Chaim Letzato's book, Mesil Shisharim. We're in the chapter, chapter 11, chapter which is about Nikiut. It's called cleanliness. And basically the idea of Nikiut is that even when a person has, so to speak, done the first clean out of himself and now does not transgress the Torah's negative commandments, but there's a still a level where he may not be actually physically doing those things which are wrong, but he's still attracted to them. And uh, part of Nikiut is to remove that underlying desire. That's one part of Nikiut. And the other part of Nikiut is to be aware of all the prote protim, the minutiae, of what make up the isso, the things that a person has to avoid. And as he says in the previous chapter, that the way that you get to this higher level, even though it's something which is to do with uh, the desire of a person as opposed to his physical actions, is this principle we've dealt with before, which is achare pa'ulos nimshichem alavavos, that the heart is drawn after the actions. When a person habituates himself to act in a certain way, this eventually becomes part of who he is, part of his emotional reality. Uh, an example of that, for example, would be the reverse of that was the Nazis. The nature of a human being is to be kind. People are generally kind. But the Nazis, through their training, inculcated cruelty into their youth, into their soldiers, into... This was... It had to be done in a... How do you say? Till that became second nature to, second nature to them. So the reverse is true. That a person can inculcate into himself the mida of nikiut. He can... Right, he can um, by repeatedly avoiding those things that the Torah prohibits, he will find eventually that he's not so drawn to them. And of course, it's a lifetime work. A person become can become more and more naki. And we're now dealing with a chapter which the, which the, talks about the kind of areas in which the. Of course, he says in every mitzvah there's a per, there's a possibility, there's the potential, there's the necessity to reach this level of Nikiut, but he identifies just the more obvious areas where Nikiut is required, necessary, and probably more difficult to the extent that a person desires the thing that he's trying to free himself from. And as it said, most people, that we've been talking up to now about theft. Now, we're not just talking about, obviously, you know, uh, guys with bags with swag marked on them, exiting from uh, people's apartments. Theft can be very subtle. You can steal somebody's st sleep by making a noise in their room. You can steal things from people by misleading them. There are all kinds of theft, and the nature of a person is a person has a, na a natural desire for money, to have the status of money, to have the power of money, to have the things that money can buy. And therefore he has to beware, because the nature of a person is to try and find all kinds of heterium, all kinds of, uh, how do you say, um, um, un, uh, permissions, all kinds of ways, hmm? leniencies, right? Ways to find to say, well, it's not so really bad, or everybody does it, or etc., etc. So he's really talking about that now, and this idea. <coughs> we're halfway through this idea of the idea of nikiut cleanliness when it comes to financial dealings. So we're going to start. It's in my book. It starts. It's a paragraph. Reino, this is where we left off last week. Reino be inyene haono. Look at the uh, matter, the subject of fraud. How easy it is a person when it comes to defrauding people. I'm not talking about, again, you know, massive Bitcoin scams and uh, this kind of thing. We're talking about not a, a, less, a level of dishonesty, which is because he wants to profit from it. How easy it is for a person to be seduced and to fall into this Avera. Um, For example, somebody who's trying to sell something, he understands that it's part of the business is business, right? And you want, you need to make your your wares, your 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 your, your uh, merchandise as, tra as attractive as possible. And um, so what is he there? In order that he should speak to the heart of the buyer, in order that he should buy it. Now, of course, advertising, modern-day advertising, has raised this to a, 
I don't know if the word art is quite the correct word, correct word, but you see that advertising has got really very often nothing to do with the product itself. Advertising, you know, you, you see uh, adverts which um, for toothpaste, uh, which have people driving around in sports cars, and uh, it means that what you know, use our toothpaste, and you'll be driving around a sports car, leading the life of a celebrity. What's one thing got to do with the other? Hopefully, you'll have clean teeth at the end of the day. But that's not the way you sell something. This is a kind of dishonesty, because it's 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 really manipulating a the underlying desires of a person in order for them to buy the project product. So that's what he's saying exactly. You're speaking to the heart. What, what really does a person want? He, you, when a, a seller is trying to figure out whenever he sees somebody's buying, what does this guy want? And I want to try, try and show him that that's what he's going to be buying. Right? And that could be that he's bringing out the the virtue was of a certain product, but we see that that's in a certain sense that could be acceptable. But very often he's, he's twisting or he's angling the, his pitch, as they call it, in order to hit the emotional target that he wants to get in order to trigger the, the response to make him buy it. And this, you see it's all over the place. This has become, on, on, on the media now, everywhere, a, a fine art of how to trigger people's emotions to get them to buy things that very often may be, that's not exactly what they wanted, or that there could be a better one that's more suited to their purpose, but you spoke to their heart. Vayom Ro, excuse me, said about this, I'll call there, Yesh Zoriz Nisko, so excuse me, not Chazal, not Chazal, take it back. Vayom people, people who want to make a profit and justify, rationalize the distortion of their, their advertising, <coughs> of their presentation of their product, and they say, they find uh, justifications. They say, Yesh Zorez, Nistake, Nisko, excuse me, the alacritous person, he's the one who profits, right? I think that in English maybe it comes out something like the, the early worm, the early, what's the early bird that gets the worm? Oh, some people say it's the early one that gets the bird, and the lazy people say that one. <coughs> but you know, you got to do it. You got to, you know, like get ahead. You got to sell. V'yad charutim ta'ashir. The hands of the diligent will become rich. All of these phrases, which are true, but they very often misappropriated and used in order to justify things which are basically dishonest, lies, geneva, theft. But if a person is not careful, and weigh his actions a lot and check what he's doing. Under the wheat will emerge the thistle, the nettle, the briar. Hidden underneath all this, this nice talk and this advertising is really a sheker, is a lie. Excuse me. Ki because this person will transgress and stumble. Ba'avoin in the sin of hona, fraud, and of course, fraud is. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean grand, grand larceny. It means deceiving people. Ashes huru alayah that the Torah itself warns in Vayikra, as it says, lo sonu ish esamiso. A person shouldn't. Abuse, he shouldn't take advantage, uh, extort in, in any way his, his, his neighbor. But Ormuz Chazal, Chazal teaches, based on this posuk, <coughs> that, uh, no, I don't think it's based on this posuk. Yes, because Amisoy, it's talking about his people. And even though that it shouldn't be, you should not allow to abuse your, your, your fellow Jew, but Chazal also te- teaches that even to form any kind of trickery with a non-Jew is, is forbidden. Ukrak Sivan, we have in Sefania, it says in the Novi, Sheir Israel lo yasu avlo, velo yidabru kozov, that the remainder of Israel, the Jewish people, it's referred to here, will not do avla iniquity, velo yidabru kozov, and they will not speak twistedness, and there will not be found in their mouths a language of deceit. 
<coughs> meaning that they're going to falsely advertise um, something which is not true. V'chein Omru, and it says in Bava Bas, Bava Matsya, Ein mefarchesin es hakeilim ha-yeshonim she-yeru k'chadoshim. A person's not allowed to, like, beautify or touch up second-hand goods to make them look new. You know, this is like a well-known trick if you go to a, you know, I mean, I, I guess used car salesmen have got a bad rap, but I mean, this is, this is something that very often <clears throat> when people go to buy a second-hand car, if you know what you're doing, you can take a, a car which is not particularly new and make it look pretty good if you know where to touch it up here and there. And of course, unless you know something about cars, um, the idea being what you want to pass it off as a new car. That's theft. That's called stealing. Plain and simple. <clears throat> and Ein Ma'orevin Peyrus Papyrus. Also, when a person is, say, is say, selling grain or fruit, he's not allowed to mix up two fruits from two different fields and sell them as they're all coming from one field. Even if those other fruits may be just as good. It's a deceit. And even if those fruits are both new, they're not old, they're of equal quality. And also, this is an interesting thing he says, even you have grain. Let's say you're not allowed to even, even to mix up new grain with old grain. And even if the new grain is only worth a saw, one saw is a dry measure, is worth a dina. And you're mixing that up <coughs> with old grain, which is worth more, which is worth a dina and a, a, a tarsis. Trisis, excuse me. Trisis is a small amount than a dina. So the old grain is actually worth more than the new grain, but you're not allowed to mix in the old grain into the new grain <coughs> and pass it off as new grain. Lo yorevei And even, this is amazing, you're not even allowed to sell it at the lower price. Again, why? Because it's misrepresentation. When you're selling something to somebody, they have to understand what it is they're buying. And any distortion <coughs> is called thievery. If, if not, nothing else, it's Genevis Das. It's stealing their minds. Kol oise ele, kol oise ovel. Anybody who does this, even as we said before, it's selling at the lower price for the better quality, but it's not what the person wanted. He wanted the new grain, and in there is the old grain, even if it's better old grain, nevertheless. <coughs> that's called ovel, that's called iniquity. And a person who does this, <coughs> the Torah calls, Hashem calls the following. A person who does this is called the following. He's called an avol, an iniquitous person. He's called sonawi, hated, mushukats, uh, disgusting, cherem, banned. He's in cherem, he's in uh, excommunicated. To'eva is disgusting, another word for disgusting. So all of these things apply to this person. And to our minds, maybe we'd say, well, you know, it's not so bad. You see how serious the sin of misrepresentation when you're selling is. Anybody who steals in whatever fashion it comes out, something which is worth a shava pruta. A shava pruta is the minimum amount of money that it's called money. Anything which is considered to be legal tender, even the smallest amount that is considered to be like he, he killed him. He took his life. So you see how you see the seriousness of this sin. I feel it be sure even in a small amount. For Amorod, it says all it's in the in um in Tainus. The only reason that rain is withheld is because of the sin of theft. And it says in the Medrash, Chazal say, Kupa Malaya Avonos, me makatreg barosh kulam gozel. Let's say, God forbid, a person has a, 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 a jar, a kupa, a box, full of sins. Which is the first of those sins which is going to stand up and accuse him at the time of his judgment? Theft. Theft is going to be the one to lead off the accusation. Again, 
the idea is to show how serious theft is, even in a more a small amount. Fedora Mabul no Nechtam Gzedinom Ella Al Gozel. The generation of the flood, even though the, the generation of the flood were <coughs> guilty <coughs> of other sins, serious sins, sexual immorality, but their they were sealed, their judgment was sealed to destruction. And only because why? Because of theft. And if you'll say in your heart, This is probably a question you'll ask yourself, well, hang on a second. Why isn't that human nature to want when you're selling something <coughs> to make it appealing to somebody? And what's so wrong with that? So says the Mishnah, there's a great difference here. Anything that a person does to show the buyer the truth of the good, of the, 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 the thing that he's selling and its beauty, to bring out features that it has, I don't know if it's a, it's a computer or you can do that, or it's a whatever it is, it's a guitar, you know, it has a, I don't know, uh, like you can swap this button here and it sounds like humbuckers or, you know, single coils or whatever it is, a car, tennis racket, whatever you want. Anything you can draw attention of the buyer to its genuine features, that's for sure permissible. And your person should do it. Hine, that's called hishtatlusu. Hotovi biyosha, that effort making that kind of effort, is good and straight. But when a person obscures the mume hefzoi, the defects of the object he's selling, it's forbidden to hide over the blemishes. <clears throat> Just one second, I want to check something here. And a straight person should point it out. He should say, you should understand that it's got, because if covering it over, covering over the blemishes is also, is, is also a way of stealing. If you know something's wrong with this car, then, you know, whatever, you know that the, it's got about another, I don't know, 40, 100 miles on the clutch and that's it. Right now you can't really tell that, but you know, the last time it went in for a service, the service guy said to you, look, you know, this clutch is going to be needing repairing in, uh, in 500 miles time. And it's like you've had 450 miles out of the car. You've got to tell the guy. To cover that over is called theft. This is a great general principle in the buying, in the, the affairs of buying, in the trust with the trustworthiness, but the faith of business dealings. Anything you can do to draw advan to uh, draw attention to the thing's advantages, its genuine qualities, is right and proper to do. Anything where you even cover over a blemish, that is also. <coughs> and of course, lo oima meinian hamidos. We don't need to talk about the idea of weights, the accuracy of, of weights. Sharib aferish kosu bahem. So it says in the Torah. Befeir is talking about somebody who has um, bad weights. The weights are, in other words, they make it seem that what you're selling is, is more than it really is. That's Tavos Hashem Elokech Kol It's It's a disgusting thing to Hashem. <coughs> Anybody who has weights which are not accurate. Va'omru, and it says in Baba Basra, Kosha Onsha Shal Hamidos Me Onsha Shal Arayos. The punishment for a person having bad weights, weights which are inaccurate, is more serious than the punishment for promiscuity and immorality. For Omru, excuse me, Avormu also says of them, Bavavasa, Asiton, Makan Emidosov, Achas Lishloshim Yom, that a wholesaler who obviously is moving a lot of uh, stuff through his warehouse, he has to check his weights that they're accurate every 30 days. He has to clean them, clean his weights. We'll call my Lama, all of this why. And uh, 
in order that he shouldn't, uh, uh, how do you say, um, give people less than they should be getting without realizing it. And as a result of that, he won't get punished because he checked his weights. Now, kol shegein oven haribis, all the more so, all the more so, is the sin of, of ribis, of taking um, interest. Shegodl hu bekoifer be'elokei Yisrael, kekoifer, excuse me, that the sin of ribis, the sin of taking interest from a Jew, is considered to be like denying the existence of the God of Israel, chas v'shalom, like atheism. For Omru Zichron Levrach, and the Chazal taught us on the Posik in Yechezkel, Beneshech Nosan, Uvatarbis Lokach, Chayoi Lo Ichye, somebody who gives with uh, interest and he takes with another kind of interest, that is, uh, his, life is, his life is no life. His life will not, he will not have life. Sha'eno Chay, this Chayev Hamesim. What does it mean that he's not going to rise up at the resurrection of the dead? Because he and his dust, his mushukats, is disgusting, and despicable in the eyes of Hashem. Very strong words. I see no reason to lengthen, to go into greater length or depth about this. A mosso muteles al kol ish Yisrael, because the fear of this is already placed on every Jew. Amnam, he's going to sum up now. Klolo shodava, the general principle, the underlying principle here is, kamo shechemda samam and rabba, to the extent that peoples have a tremendous strong desire for money, one of the greatest desires in the world. Cain, michshalos of rabim. So similarly, the its, stum, its um, traps and the stumbling blocks and the pitfalls, that's the word, are also very, very many, commensurate to the desire, desire that a person has for money, people have. And again, we're talking about being clean here. For a person to be totally clean of these things in truth, he needs to look very carefully, examine all of his dealings in great depth, and he also, apart from his analysis of what he's doing, he has to also be very careful as to what, in practice, he goes on to do. He needs to spend a lot of time analyzing what he's doing and how he should do it, and be careful that his actions match up to his analysis. And if a person does manage to reach this level, he should know, he has already reached a, very, a great level. Ki rabim, Yishastu ba'anofim rabim, ma'anfe ha'chasidus, uve'inyan, sina sabetza lo yochlu lahagia el mechoz ha'shlemus. Interesting idea. Because there are many people who are able to become, he uses the word chasadim, they can be, to become a, a chosid, can become not just a person who is a tzaddik, Again, the difference between a tzaddik and a chosid is a tzaddik who does everything that's written in the Shulchan Aruch. A chosid is somebody who goes beyond the letter of the law. So many people can rise up above what is required by the, the Shulchan Aruch, by the halacha, in many areas of life. And in all of the many different branches where a person can become, in this way, a, chas, a chosid. And when it comes to the hating of profit, sone betza, meaning being very careful when it comes to money, they're not able to reach to this aspiration, this, or, the, or rather to reach this perfection of, of Nikias when it comes to money. This is what Tsofa Hanami, Naamosi, Tsova Naamosi, I think, was one of the advisors of, that Eov, that Job had. And he said to him, says in Eov, Im obon biodcha, if you have a sin in your hand, harchikeu, distance yourself from it. Ba'al tashkein bo'aleo avla, and do not allow iniquity to dwell in your tent. Ki oz tisa panecha mimum, 
because because then you will bear your face mimum from uh, a how does he translate this? Ki oz. I'm not sure I got this. Ki im. Probably the whole thing will will pick up the word is if there's iniquity in your hand, put yeah. it far away. Right. Not for virgin dwell in your tent. Right. So then you would lift your face without blemish. Ah ah. Ki oz, because then tisa panecha, you lift up your face mimum uh, without a blemish. Vayisa mutzak, and you'll be clean, clear, velotira, and you won't fear. Okay. Vinay says the Siddhish Ram Dibati. Adhena, I've spoken up till now. Miprote mitzvah achas mina mitzvahs. I've spoken just about the details of one mitzvah. The mitzvah to be careful in your financial dealings when it comes to money. Gezel. Uchaprote chalukim eile. Vade shenimtam bechol mitzvah mitzvah. And these minutiae, these details, which I've discussed in this particular mitzvah, you will find in every mitzvah for sure. I said this at the beginning. But I'm only dealing, I'm only going to mention those uh, mitzvahs which the majority of people um, stumble in them, fall into the trap <coughs> where these particular things are concerned. Now, so that's the end of his discussion on money. The next thing he's going to move on to is promiscuity, uh, immorality. But now, Daber... <clears throat> and let's now talk about arayos, promiscuity, sexual immorality. Shigam heim min hachamurim. This is also amongst the most serious sins. Veim shniim b'madrega el gezel, and they are only second in the level uh, after immediately after theft. Kemamar mitzigron lebrachas chazal say in Bava Basra. Kuf Samach Hey, Ahmed Beis. Rubam Begazel. Most people stumble when it comes to theft. Umiutam Baarayos. And a minority when it comes to immorality. Vinaymi Shiyirtse Lahinakois the Gamrim is there. Somebody who wants to completely clean himself from this particular chet. Gamlo Titstarich Malacha Lo Muetis. He will also not. He will, re- he will require more than a little effort. It's obviously ironic. He'll need a lot of work. Because when we're talking about being knocky when it comes to a rice, we're not just talking about the act itself. Anything that comes close to it. And we have many um, sayings um, in, in Chazal, in Vayikra, Lo sikrav legalois erva. It says in the posik in um, I'm sorry, that's in the Torah. Do not come close to reveal the nakedness. It's talking about sexual immorality. What does that mean? Don't say ho'il va'osoli lishtamesh ba'isha. Seeing it's forbidden for me to have relations with the woman. Hare tovsa. Okay, fine. So I can hold her. I won't have a sin because I didn't actually have relations with her. Or Hareini Magapfa, I could embrace her. Ainli Avon, because the only thing that's wrong is to have relations. Oh, Sha'ani Noshka, or I give her a kiss. Ve'ainli Avon, and I won't have a sin because, again, Oma Kodesh Brochu, says Hashem, Keshem She'im Noda, Nozir, Shalo Lishtos Yain. Just as when a Nozir, Somebody, a Nazar, Nazarite, when he prohibits himself from drinking wine. So it's not just wine that's prohibited for him to drink. Also, it's also for him forbidden, forbidden, forbidden for him to consume lechal anovim, to eat grapes, lachim, if they're moist, the yaveshim, or if they're dry, I guess they're called currants or raisins, or mishras anovim, um, grape juice, v'chal ayotze Anything that's a product, an edible product, that is, of the vine is prohibited to him. And of course, that's the Arisa. That's been a Torah. But Chazal took their cue from that. A woman who is not yours. It's forbidden to touch her at all. Somebody who touches a woman. That's not his, not his wife. Maybe Misa he brings death to himself. 
והבית, מה נפלו דברי המיימר הזה, זה מיימר חז"ל. See how extraordinary these words of חז"ל are. כי המשל אס האיסר הזה לנוזיה, because the איסר of immorality, promiscuity, is compared to the איסר of the נוזיה, of the נזרייט. אשר אף על פי שאיכא איסר אינה אלא שתייס יין, because even though the essential איסר is to not drink wine, הנה אוסרו לה התורה כל מה שיש לוי שייכוס עם היין. The Torah אוסרס everything which is connected to the wine. והיה זה לימוד, and this is the, um, what's the word, the, um, the paradigm, that שלימדה התורה לחכמים, which the Torah taught to the חכמים when it comes to the issa of immorality. איך יעשו הם הסייג לתורה במשמרס שנמסה ביודם לעשוס למשמרתו. How the Chazal was supposed to go about creating boundaries and um, fences to protect people from coming to the Isra itself. Ki yilam yilmadu min anozir, because they will learn from the anozir. Le'aso ba'avo ikah, to us as, because of the essential um, avera, gam kol the domile, everything that's similar to it. Benimsha sa'os sa'hatayra, b'mitzvah zois shal nozir, מה שמוסרו לחכמים שיעשו בשעה כל המצווהס. And so they use this, as we said, as a paradigm from the Nozir, as to how they should go about, about give, keep, uh, giving restrictions in all other areas. למען דס שזה רצונו של מוקם. In order to, to, for people to understand that that's what Hashem wants. Hashem gave us the paradigm of the Nozir to understand that when it comes to any kind of restriction, keeping far away from any kind of Avera, This is the pattern that Chazal should adopt. And when they, <coughs> when the Torah asks to us any one of the Isurim that it does, we should learn the, what is not spoken out explicitly from that which is. To make Osa everything. Chazal to learn to make also anything which is close to it or would lead to it. And therefore that's why Chazal also anything which was close to the actual act itself uh, or and it would be and whether that would be In whatever of the human senses that may be, shear the hainu it could be beim b'masa, physical action, anything which is physically close to um, sexual relations, or beim b'ria whether it's sight, beim b'dibur whether it's speech, beim b'shmiya, beim whether hearing. All of these things are going to be also, even though the Torah doesn't say so, but the Torah gave us this. paradigm by which we, 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 we're supposed to learn, and Chazal taught us that all of these things are also osa. Va'afilu machshava, even thinking about things of that nature, are osa. Va'ata avi l'cha rayos al kol eila midrehem zichon l'roch. I'm not going to bring you proofs to what I'm saying from what Chazal say. But ma'ase, in terms of action, da'hainu ha'negiya o ha'chibuk u'kayotzeh. In other words, touching, but of course not talking about actual physical relations. Why, how do we know that touching or, or embracing similar things to that, how, how do we know that's also? So, Kavan is Ba'alamala, we already explained above, but Ma'ama Zichronu, so Zichronu, but ain't Sarech Larech. We already said before, we don't need to go into that again. Now, what about sight? Be'ira. Om Ruzal, Yad Liyad Lo Yenoke Ra. The one It says in uh, Brochus, hand to hand, he will not be cleaned from evil. And Chazal explained what does that mean. It's a posik, I think, in Mishle. Does he say where it's, that posik is? In Mishle. In Mishle. That's a posik in Mishle. But the Gemara in Brochus explains what does that mean. Kol hamaratze mo'is. Anybody who counts out money when he's giving money, paying um, some, a woman in a shop, from his hand into hand, hand, and he takes his time over doing it, in order that he can look at her 
And listakil doesn't just mean, you know, quickly glance. It means having, uh, I guess you'd say in England to, o- in English, to ogle, to take a, to take a good look at her. Lo shal gehinnam. He will not be sa- saved from the din of gehinnam. Meaning, even though it's not an Issa Deiraisa, the Rabbonin it's also to do, and he will be punished for this. He will not be saved from the, from the din of Gehenim. Again, because why? This is something he did, deliberately went, to, went out to do. Now, of course, maybe we should add here. I think I'll just go uh, point this out, and then we'll finish off in a couple of sentences. Obviously, we live in a world where, you know, probably the majority of people that we're going to come across in the street are going to be uh, women. The thing is that a person, there's much to talk about here, but maybe we'll just say a few ideas. First of all, the Issa, as we saw, is histaklus. Histaklus is looking in a way which is to derive pleasure. Histaklus means to look with the idea that you want to look to uh, have pleasure from looking. Of course, if you're walking out in the street and, and uh, you should try and guide your, guard your eyes as much as possible. There's many, there are several things you can do to train yourself. Uh, for example, I'll give you a very good example. If the, uh, let's say uh, you're in the base medrash and a whole pile of books falls down at the back of the room. So everybody goes, what's going on? You know, so don't look. Don't look. Why do you have to look? Or, you know, people are digging a hole in the road and you always find a crowd of people around that hole. I mean, what do you, you know, what are they looking at? Or a jet goes overhead. If a person trains himself not to look at things which are really, at the end of the day, not particularly attractive, I mean, how attractive is a hole in the ground? How attractive is a pile of books falling down? But if a person practices that meter, if he goes to the boot camp and says, I'm not just going to look wherever my eyes want me to go, then when he comes to a situation where there's something that his eyes, which is far more attractive, and the nature, the yeta of a person wants to see with a great desire, far more than seeing some hole in the ground, he'll find that he will have a little, and of course the more he does this, the ability to control himself. <clears throat> but of course, there are persons walking out in the street, there are going to be ladies in the street, and inevitably you're going to see, but you can look and you can look away. You don't have to gaze, you don't have to ogle, you don't have to histakel. Uh, this is... Um, a very important lesson. And I think a person, you can, you can train yourself, you can build up your muscles. <clears throat> but the Torah is talking about the Issa here, was the Issa of is doing something which is going to bring you into, deliberately, you're going to count down that money very slowly so that you can take a good look. Okay, let's just finish off. So he said, Why did the Jewish people in that door, that generation, require uh, atonement? Because they, this, the, Lord, the word of zonu is, means, um, a zona is a prostitute. But it can, use as a, it can be used as a verb when re, referring to the eyes. Their, I mean, it doesn't. You can't say it in English. Their eyes prostituted, but that's the, that's the idea. They allowed their eyes to feast on things which were nakedness, erva, uh, issa. Omar Rav Sheshes mipnei ma Sheshes mipnei ma mona hakosiv tachshitin shebechutz im tachshitin bifnim. Why does the the Torah um, uh, uh, equate uh, jewelry worn on the outside of the clothes with jewelry which is worn inside of the un, under the clothes. Lo to tell you, Anybody who gazes at the small finger of a woman, it's as though he looked at something which was um, a very private part of her. And it also says, Guard yourself, it says, for anything which is all evil things. He shouldn't, that a man should not stare. Again, it doesn't mean look. It means have a good look for the wrong reasons. At an isha, no, a beautiful woman. And even if she's 
single. And he shouldn't stare at an ashes ish, a married woman, and even if she's ugly. Also speaking to a woman. We learned explicitly in the Mishnah in Ovois, Kalamar be sicha ima isha, anybody who lengthens, who speaks to a woman more than is necessary. I mean, of course, that doesn't mean you have to be rude. Uh, you, you're in a shop, you, you can ask somebody for what you need, but you don't need to say more than is necessary. Kalamar be sicha ima isha, gorem ra la he causes, he brings bad evil to himself. Kashmir <clears throat> Amru. And as we know that it says when talking about, when listening to a woman, now this is specifically I think about singing, listening to a, wo- a woman's voice. Singing is called erva. Kol isha erva, a woman's voice is considered to be nakedness. Okay, next week, Bezrat Hashem, we'll go on and we'll talk about nivul peh, about obscenity and how uh, serious that is. Okay. <laughs>